This study, which is part of a three-year project funded by the Ontario Ministry of Research and Innovation, investigates the relationship between a multi-literacies pedagogy and the development of adolescent identity and digital literacy using a mixed method research approach of qualitative case study analysis and quantitative surveying. More specifically, it focuses on a, how a class of adolescents ages 12 to 13 reflected on the impact of digital technologies and media on their lives well immersed in a rich media setting. Using a social networking site and a combination of their own mobile devices and tablets that were provided to them by their classroom teacher. The overarching research goal is to examine the construction, deconstruction and reconstruction of adolescent identities through an exploration of their social practices within a digital landscape using mobile devices for learning in a classroom and in the wider spaces of their lives. We draw on the theoretical, three theoretical frameworks. The first one is adolescent identity and digital media. Youth are very naturally concerned with developing identities and are constantly finding new ways to express themselves, particularly with their digital devices. The authors of the Horizon Report predict that by the year 2015, 80% of those who access the internet will be using their mobile devices to do so. And Adami and Kress point out that the media we use and the affordances they offer, what they facilitate, what they hinder and inhibit, influ influences how we make meaning and hence how we come to shape our identity in that respect. The second uh, framework we draw on is multiliteracies. And teachers are increasingly aware of and attracted to the educational potential of new media devices, but there are many institutional obstacles. The traditional view of literacy and the reading and writing of print text has expanded to include viewing and communicating in many different ways about texts of all kinds, including images, video, gestures, sounds, and the like. Within a multiliteracies framework, there's an emphasis on students as producers or designers rather than just as consumers of texts. And the New London Group's concept of multiliteracies highlights the relevance of new forms of literacy associated with emerging multimedia and multimodal technologies. As Langshire and Noble remind us, new literacies are characterized not solely by their digital or technical features, they also involve a new mindset or a new ethos which focuses on participation, collaboration, and distribution. We also draw on the work of James G and his work on affinity spaces and Wenger's work of, on community of practice. Social networking sites such as the Ning that we use in this project position users as co-authors and co-developers and tap into their collective intelligence, which facilitates the collection and sharing of user-generated content. We used a mixed methods approach, which is suitable for collecting both in-depth stories and attitu attitudinal data before and after participation in the study. We worked with one class of 24 intermediate students in an Ontario classroom east of Toronto. The students were in grade eight, seven and eight, so they were ages 12 and 13. And they engaged with texts and activities that were focused on adolescent issues related to the role of new media in their lives. The students were permitted to use their own electronic devices uh, as well as a number of digital tools and they were also provided with access to BlackBerry Playbook tablets at all times. During the course of the media unit that focused, on, that focused on body image, students participated in activities such as literature circles based on books that dealt with a the theme of body image and media. The creation, uh, they also created original digital poetry. They remixed song lyrics, adding images. Uh, they created a mock broadcast of a TV talk show containing song performances, advertisements, interviews on the effects of media in their lives. They developed online magazines or e-zines, and they deconstructed advertisements and articles, and they discussed these on the Ning. They also created online posters using Glogster and Tagzito. They also participated in blogging, journaling, and posting to a secure social networking site, in this case, the Ning. We used, uh, we, we used three surveys with the students. Two were for 
two were pre-surveys, pre-project surveys, and one was a post-project survey. We also collected data through observation, field notes, open-ended interviews, focus groups, and the visual and content analysis of digital text that the students created. We have begun to analyze the survey results, and we've also begun deconstructing the students' digital texts using visual and content analyses. However, the interviewed data at this point is still being transcribed. The data are being coded for various themes that emerged in the research. The multimodal texts created by the students are also currently being analyzed within a framework of semiotic meta-functions. So the digital um, visual literacy analysis method of developing a pictorial and textual representation of those elements developed by Hull and Katz is being used. That analysis focuses on the various modes of expression, so in columns, the visual, um, the visual image, the gesture, the movement, and, and what's happening on screen, all of those things and how they work together in concert to create meaning. We're also particularly interested in what Bruner calls turning points in the research where students um, might uh, comment on uh, a shift in the way they're representing their identity. Ultimately, a cross-case analysis will be conducted to compare and contrast the cases of the individual students. I mentioned that we used pre-surveys and a post-survey. The two pre-surveys involved um, questioning them about their technology use and about their use of tablets in, in particular. The post-survey asked them to complete seven questions to obtain their opinions and to provide descriptions of their experience in using the technologies throughout the project. In the technology pre-survey, uh, one of the questions asked them, which electronic devices, if any, do you think would improve your learning if you were permitted to use them at school? And you can see from the results that they thought laptop computers, iPods and iPads would be most useful with cell phones, smartphones and netbook computers being somewhat useful. In the tablet pre-survey, we asked the students, what level of interest would you say you have in using tablets in the classroom? And the majority of them, as you can see, 81.8% were extremely interested, where a 9.1% that would probably e equal one of the students, some were somewhat interested, and one said he was not at all interested. In the tablet pre-survey, question number two asked them to explain in detail their first answer. And just to highlight some of the comments that the students made, one student said, using an electronic device is easier for me to write and or navigate on because that is what I'm used to. So pen and paper is more difficult um, in the classroom uh, context for that student. Also, another student said that accessing the internet and other resources as a class without having a time limit was appealing because typically in a classroom setting, students have to go to a lab and are only booked in for a particular period of time and there's lots of competition for that lab space. Another student said, it's awesome to have something right with me at my desk to research on and elaborate my work. That idea of the immediacy of having the devices right there and having that information easily accessible. And uh, again, in the last quotation, a um, student remarking on the convenience of having digital uh, mobile devices. In terms of the technology post-survey, we asked the students to describe some of the activities they enjoyed during the unit, which involved technology and asked them what they enjoyed about them. One student said that incorporating music with technology is a bonus because that's a big part of my life and it's fun when it follows you to school. So that idea of tapping into students out of school literacies and bringing them into the classroom context was important here. Another student said, I also greatly enjoyed just using the playbooks and other sources to gather information, this made everyone open to research, even if the lab was unavailable. So again, that notion of having um, ubiquitous access was very important to them. Another student remarked that, I find that when we use technology for things like this, it opens up different windows of opportunity to express and show our point better, such as inserting videos of interviews. So they found that the multimodal forms of expression gave them more ways to communicate their understanding. Another student said that the mock social media sites, and, and she's referring to Ning here, 
um, as it gave students a chance to express their views and receive feedback from their peers instead of spending hours to receive a one, two, three, or four. And what she means by that is typically a student will write a piece of, uh, do a piece of writing for their teacher. The teacher will mark it and give them a level, one, two, three, or four. Whereas she's saying this was, I was doing this for an authentic audience. I was doing it to get response from my peers. Um, and finally, another student said, it was taking something that was fairly basic and bringing it to the next level by using technology as our resource to create it. On the computer, there are many more options to make your mag magazine advanced. Um, for example, videos, animations, and a wider range of design options. So this student liked that they could create a better, more sophisticated product by using the technology. Um, this is one of the responses that was included on the Ning for the project, and it's very difficult to see. It's very small print, but she writes, uh, you can see how much she writes, first of all, but she writes a very good uh, response to an article that was posted on the Ning that asks if by using technology so, so much, are we creating a brainless society? Are we dumbing down society? And she writes a very cogent and um, well-articulated piece about the pros and cons of technology. Um, another group posted this Tagzito on the Ning, and it's based on body image, and they've written, our Tagzito on body image demonstrates how we should step on the media and forget what it says. Um, this is actually uh, the breakdown of one of the digital poems that was submitted, and you can see how complex it actually is, not just in the images chosen, but the also the text that's included, and that the music that they use to complement the message. Each student was also required to explicate their poem for the rest of the class and explain why they chose the images, the fonts, the colors, um, and all of the different design choices that they made. The poems very clearly demonstrated the student's ability to deconstruct the media's messages. So in this one, we have four different uh, slides that they included in their digital poem. The first one says, forced control into my brain. How come I'm not perfect? Images burned into my mind, distort the right and wrong. So using their words in combination and conjunction with the words that are actually on the images themselves to communicate a message about how to resist, um, how, to, how to begin to deconstruct and resist the influence of media on their percep perceptions of themselves. And this is evident in this one as well, where in the last slide we have happiness in the palm of our hands. That's something attainable that we should have strived for in the first place, rather than focusing on perfection as as um, expected by media and society. In terms of findings of this project, um, we found that the students, when, we, when they were working on their e-magazines, they created ads focused on using media to shift the focus from unattainable perfection to healthy living. Um, so in discussions, they talked about their new awareness of the pervasive negative messages in media and the harmful effects they have on adolescents. And they also chose body positive images such as Adele to demonstrate the importance of health over extreme thinness. In terms of their deconstruction of advertisements, they became aware of the subtleties in ads which contribute to negative body images. They felt that they now looked at ads even outside of school now that they had these new critical eyes than average consumers and even their parents who they were talking to about what they were learning in school. The students compared the ads in terms of the underlying messages, some negative and some positive, and they were able to comment on the differences. In their Ning responses, they demonstrated the ability to reflect on how media affects them personally, and they were also able to analyze and compare both the negative and positive effects of technology in their own lives. In their digital poetry, they discussed the use of fonts, images, music, word choice, in a way that demonstrated their understanding of how each element contributes to the overall message. They used very strong graphic images to warn their peers about the negative um, media messages, 
And the poems showed evidence of critical thought, particularly of how the medium manipulates its audience. We noticed um, a very notable increase in the level of engagement of the students. They certainly developed research skills due to the accessibility of information on the devices. The ubiquitous access to current media texts um, provided immediacy and relevance to their learning. And they developed critical literacy skills as well as digital literacy skills. And we also noticed improved collaboration as they shared resources and roles in their project work. And they certainly commented that they felt privileged to be able to use these devices when many of their uh, peers were not at this point using them. In terms of the challenges in the project, there were barriers to implementation, certainly time to learn to use the different digital tools, resources, and support, certainly support from the board level because they were using BlackBerry playbooks which were not supported by the board compared to iPads which are twice as expensive. There were ongoing accessibility issues, again, um, system restrictions and restraints on what the students were allowed to access. Still, YouTube has been banned, and uh, some websites are also still banned. So that's uh, one of the limitations. The devices themselves had some limitations, so students who wanted to write an extended uh, piece of writing on the Ning, did not have a uh, keyboard to communicate with, so that made it more difficult and time consuming. And there were some other compatibility issues with programs we wanted to use that we're not, uh, we were not able to use on the playbooks for whatever reason. And um, minimally, there were some off-task behavior with the use of the devices, particularly with the student-owned iPods, um, but this was, as I said, quite minimal. This project has led to future research examining the use of mobile devices in grades 6 through 10 classrooms in Ontario and in um, Newfoundland as well. In a three-year SHRC-funded project that will begin September 2012, we're going to be looking at the use of mobile devices to develop critical and digital literacy skills and to develop a guide for best practices in this area as more and more school boards begin to equip their schools with Wi-Fi. Thank you.